Good morning. My name is Rosalind, and we welcome all of you to St. Alphonsus Liguori Parish to celebrate the solemnity of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Today's readings can be found in the Blue Gather Hymnal, number 1206. Every so often, a solemnity like the Assumption falls on a Sunday, giving more prominence to this special feast of Mary. At the end of her earthly life, God drew Mary home, assuming her into heaven where she will reign as queen for all eternity. From the beginning of her life on earth, when she was immaculately conceived until the end, the Blessed Virgin Mary conformed her life to God's will. Let us look to her as, mo as a model as we endeavor to discern God's will for us. Our celebrant for this Mass is Father Joseph Lay, our pastor. We respectfully ask that you place your cell phones on silence during this liturgy. Please stand. Good morning. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Uh, and the color for today is supposed to be white. But as you see, you walk to the church, you see the red color on the altar. The reason for that is yesterday, uh, the 41 tin will conform. Okay, so we want to keep it here to remind you that we need to pray for our uh, confirmandi that they just receive the Holy Spirit. And uh, in the back of the church, we see a lot of communion banners. So this coming Saturday, we have uh, a number of children who receive the first communion. So we also pray for our children. And let us begin the Mass with a sigh of our faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of the Lord be with you all. To prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery, let's take a moment to acknowledge our sins and we ask the Lord for forgiveness and mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to be. We adore you, we glorify you, we 
Looking on the lowliness of the Blessed Virgin Mary, raise her to this grace, that your only begotten Son were born of her according to the flesh, and that she will crown this day with surpassing glory. Grant through her praise that saved by the mystery of your redemption, we may merit to be exalted by you on high. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Revelation. God's temple in heaven was opened, and the ark of his covenant could be seen in the temple. A great sign appeared in the sky, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon beneath her feet, and on her head, a crown of 12 stars. She was with child and wailed aloud in pain as she labored to give birth. Then another sign appeared in the sky. It was a huge red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and on its head were seven diadems. Its tail swept away a third of the stars in the sky and hurled them down to the earth. Then the dragon stood before the woman about to give birth to devour her child when she gave birth. She gave birth to a son, a male child, destined to rule all the nations with an iron rod. Her child was caught up to God and his throne. The woman herself fled into the desert where she had a place prepared by God. And I heard a voice in the heavens say, now have salvation and power come, and the kingdom of our God, and the authority of his anointed one. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead came also through man. For just as in Adam all died, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life, but each one in proper order. Christ, the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father, when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to, to be destroyed is death. For he subjected everything under his feet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste, to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how did this happen to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believe that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaimed the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked upon his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty have done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. 
He has shown the strength of his arm. He has gathered the proud in their conceit. He has cast out the mighty from their thrones and have lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our, Af to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. So after Mass today, I will baptize two beautiful babies. So I saw the families here. So welcome these families. There's one woman who died in her 50s. So we came to see Jesus. Jesus looked up at her record and he said to her, wow, I made a mistake. You are not supposed to die today. So I send you back to the world and you have 30 more years to live. So this woman went back and she said to herself, now I have 30 more years to do, to live. So I try to make the most of it. So next day, she went to the plastic surgeon and he, she said to him, okay, I want you to give me a new image, right? Make everything perfect for me. Don't care about, I don't care about the cost. So after a few months in the hospitals to go through all kinds of surgeries, and she was very happy with her new image. And she can't wait to go home to show to her friends and families and neighbors who she is. But on her way home, she got an accident and she died. She went to see Jesus again and she complained to Jesus, Lord, you told me that I have 30 more years to live. Now I end up dead. And Jesus said, I could not recognize you. So friends, the point of the story is, a lot of people, maybe we, we concern about our own image, our own bodies. Right? We try to reserve our body. We try to make look good, to make it look good. It's not only when we're still alive, but when we think about after we die, we still worry for our bodies. So my mother, she's 86 now, and she's very ill. And she said to us several times that she doesn't want to have the cremation you know, cremation in, in Vietnam now is very common and popular because to bury is very expensive. We asked her why. She said, it is too hard. It's too hard to be burned. No, in the Archdiocese of Los Angeles built a new cathedral, right? Uh, it's a $200 million cathedral there. And beneath the church, they have the mausoleum. And I did some research this morning to be buried beneath that church. The, the one box down there start with $50,000. I don't know what is the, the highest one. But it's very expensive to be buried beneath that church. So people worry and concern about their body even after their death. But when we receive the ashes on Ash Wednesday, 
the minister put the ashes on our head and said, Remember, you are dust, and unto dust you shall return. A lot of people see that, yes, that is the fact that we all end up one way or another. Sooner or later, all of this body, my body and your body, and all the people who die, whatever type of their burial they want to have, we end up to be dust or ashes. That is the fact that we have to take. But the good news is in, for our, our Christian faces, we don't have to, 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 to end up like that. We don't have to stop right there, to stop at the ashes. Because Christian faith believes in the resurrection of the dead. I know you go to a lot of funerals, and at the, the grave size, this is what the priest or deacon will pray. We pray that for we are dust, and unto dirt we shall return. But the Lord Jesus Christ will change our mortal bodies to be like his in glory. For his reason, the firstborn from the dead. That is the contents of the second reading we heard today. We don't have to be ashes forever because we believe in the risen Lord who rose from the dead and he is the firstborn from the dead. So if Jesus is the firstborn from the dead, who is the second? The Virgin Mary. And that's why we celebrate her assumption today. The first reading today from the book of Revelation somehow gives us the image of Mary. She's the one who gave birth to the, to, to the Savior. And then the Lord preserve her, protect her. The, the responsorial psalm today tell us that where she, she's a queen standing at the right side of the Lord, dressed in gold. In the gospel reading today, after uh, Mary met Elizabeth, she raised her voice to proclaim, to, to praise the Lord. And somehow Mary prophesied about herself. She said that from this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty have done great things for me. From this day, not a few people, but all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty have done great things for me. What the Almighty have done for Mary? Yes, the Almighty, the Lord, ask her, call her, invite her to be the mother of God's son, Jesus. So she become not only the mother of the human Jesus, but the divine Jesus. She become the mother of God. And not to stop right there. And today, we can point to another thing that the Almighty can do great thing for Mary. And she become the second fruit. The Lord not only protect her, but reward her the greatest gift, the gift of resurrection. So that's why f from the early age of our church until today, we believe that after Mary finished her life on earth, the Lord bring her and brought her all soul and body to be with Jesus. And the angel 
in heaven. Should Mary become the second fruit of the resurrection? That means that Mary will help us to be like her. We don't have to be remain at ashes or dust after we die. We will be like her to rise again with our soul and body to be with Mary in the heavenly kingdom. So today, the feast help us to raise our eye about the fact of ashes and dust like people with our faith stuck with after they die. We don't have to be like that. We will rise with Jesus, with Mary. We will be with Jesus and Mary, with our soul and our body. So friends, stop worrying too much about our body on this age and after we die. Because if we believe in Jesus, in the risen Lord, we will end up like married and in the feast that we celebrate today. That is the great promise, the big hope that we all, a Christian, a Catholic, put all our trust in our, our belief in. So Mary is not only the mother of Jesus, the mother of God and our mother. We all know that mother always want her children to be around her. That is for sure. Mary want all of us to be with her in heaven. And we have the freedom to say yes or no to that. We have the freedom to say yes with Mary to follow her footsteps. Jesus lead all of us to God. Mary lead all of us to Jesus. That is for sure. For those who have a strong devotion to Mary will come to Jesus, will love Jesus, and become the good disciple of Jesus. So friends, let us learn from Mary. Let us follow Mary. And let us try to be a good and faithful children of our beloved heavenly mother. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe one Lord Jesus Christ, unbegotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, be God not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men of our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit, we encountered the Virgin Mary and became men. For our sake, crucified and Pontius Pilate, he suffered as he was buried and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven at the seat of the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceed for the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is spoke to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Let us ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, who reigns in heaven for all eternity, to intercede on our behalf before the Lord. That our church, under the patronage of Mary, may always be a sign of humility. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That leaders of nations will act with humility 
and kindness. We pray to the Lord, Lord hear prayer. that women of all nations may be respected and honored and that single mothers receive the support and kindness they need to be good parents. We pray to the Lord, Lord hear our prayer. for our 41 young people who were confirmed in their faith on Saturday and for their sponsors, that the Holy Spirit will strengthen them and draw them closer to God, who loves them so much. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For teachers and students who are returning to school, especially for students who are leaving home for their studies, that all will be safe and increase in knowledge and wisdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community of St. Alphonsus Liguori, that we may strive to bring Christ into the world through our prayers, our words, and our actions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our community who are unable to worship with us because of illness, especially Marge Fosselman, Maria Cacuccolo, Matt Romalia, Jesus Diofaro, baby Walter Thompson, Pat Salka, Keith Knight, Clayton and Marie Berrigan, Arlene Adamson, Ellen Ward, Mary Graff, Steve Henn, Leroy Andre, and Dem Denny Simmons. For those in need of our prayers and those mentioned, in our book of petitions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For those who have died, including Merton Carl Smith, uncle of Wendy Madison, for all the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts, and for those we remember at this Mass, Ida Strazante, Michael Whalen, and Maria Janus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have blessed us with great things, and holy is your name. Come to our aid and grant the needs we bring before you through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Please join in singing number 458, I Sing a Maid, number 458. I see a maid of tender years to whom an angel came and knelt as to a mighty queen that bow bright wings of flame. The nations my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation, our tribute of homage, 
rise up to you, O Lord, and through the intercession of the most blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assume into heaven, may our heart, aflame with the fire of love, constantly long for you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For today, the Virgin Mother of God was assumed into heaven at the beginning an image of your church coming to perfection in the sight of sure hope and comfort to your pilgrim people. Rightly, you could not allow her to see the corruptions of the tomb, since from her own body she marvelously brought forth your incarnate Son, the author of all life. And so in company of the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. May holy, therefore, this gift we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time we betray and enter willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave him thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more gave him thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which he poured down for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, to your church, spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, place of bishop, and all those who serve your church. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all that was the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the blessed apostle and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heir to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O oh, glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior command and form a divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from our distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Bless the other call to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say it would that my soul shall be healed.
please join in singing number 891, Ave Maria, number 891. Let us pray. Have we received the sacrament of salvation? 
We ask you to grant, O Lord, that through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assume into heaven, we may be brought to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. We have a couple of announcements. This is an important announcement. The church parking lot will be completely closed for seal coating on Monday, August 16th at 5 a.m. until 5 a.m. on Tuesday, August 17th. There will be no access to the lot or parking available. 8.15 a.m. Mass on Monday is canceled, and the parish office will be closed to foot traffic. The American Heritage Girls of St. Alphonsus are here after Mass to invite young girls ages 5 to 18 years old to join AHG Troop Illinois 1317. This troop is consecrated to Our Lady of Fatima. Their goal is to help young girls learn more about their Catholic faith and tradition and to fulfill their oath to love God, cherish my family, honor my country, and serve my community. They look forward to meeting you in the narthex. Please read more about them in the bulletin. Thank you. Hi, my name is Therese George, and I'm an explorer in American Heritage Girls Troop 1317. I love being part of American Heritage Girls because it's fun, there's fellowship, and lots of learning, like home decorating and arts and crafts. AHG gives me a platform to do service, like participating in Rosary Rally and March for Life. For all the grandparents who are here, feel free to pick up a flyer for your granddaughters. Please come and ask me more of my experiences in AHG. Thank you for giving me a time to speak. God bless you all. It's a wonderful program for uh, young uh, girls to join, to grow in their, in their faith and also in the others' uh, social skill. So I strongly encourage those families who have young girls to think about it or try it. Uh, we all know that uh, the new school year is about to begin. Uh, so um, I would like to invite all students, young and old, who are in elementary school, middle school, high school, or those who go to college, I invite you to come forward to the front to receive the special blessing that the Lord will help you to study well this coming school year. All students, young and old, please come up. All students, from preschool to college. Right? We have a lot of young people, students in our church. Right? So as we know that uh, COVID is still there, right? so we need to ask the Lord to protect you to protect you at school and also help you to learn well. Right? So I invite all the parishioners, please attend uh, our hands upon these wonderful students and ask the Lord to bless them. Lord our God, in your wisdom and love, you surround us with the mysteries of the universe. We thank you for your gift of education and the ability to learn. Send your spirit upon these students and fill them with your wisdom and blessings. Bless their teachers, professors, and all the role models they will encounter in their academic journey this year. Protect those who are leaving home and keep all of our students safe and healthy. Grant that these students may devote themselves to their studies and draw ever closer to you, the source of all knowledge. We ask this through Christ our Lord. May God bless you and good luck to you at your study. Thank you.
The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Mass ended. Let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Please join in singing number 894, My Soul Gives Glory, number 894. 